When planes break the sound barrier, you can tell. And it's pretty easy to figure out if the cops are coming for you, just by whether the pitch or frequency of their siren is going up or down. But why do these things happen? And how can we be sure that the universe is expanding like scientists say? The answer to all of these questions is the Doppler effect. Welcome to Flip Physics. Today I'm going to talk about the Doppler effect. In one episode of The Big Bang Theory, Sheldon actually dressed as the Doppler effect. So let's let him take it from here. I hate what Sheldon's supposed to be. Oh, he's the Doppler effect. Yes. It's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. <laughs> oh, sure, I see it. Now the Doppler effect. All right, I got a shower. You guys um, make yourselves comfortable. Thanks, Sheldon. Video over. Thank you for watching Flip Physics. If you like this video, you can press the... Well, hold on a second. I think there's a little bit more to this story. If we're gonna really understand this effect, we need a graphical representation of waves. We sometimes use diagrams like this, where each line represents the peak of the wave. These lines are known as wave fronts. So let's say it's summer. It's blistering hot and you and your friends decide to have a water fight. You go to your garage, grab your water balloon gun, well, what do you mean you don't have a water balloon gun? Who doesn't have a water balloon gun? Amateurs. So anyway, you get your water balloon gun and you start firing at a rate of six water balloons every second at your friend. If instead of standing still as you fired, you actually ran towards him as you did, would he get hit with water balloons at a faster rate, a slower rate, or exactly the same rate? He would get hit at a faster rate because every time you fired a water balloon, you run forwards a little bit, catching up just a tiny bit with the water balloon. So the next one you fire is a little bit closer than it would have been if you just stood still. Just that little amount that you close the gap means that the water balloons will be slightly closer together and so he would get hit by more water balloons per second than if you just stood still. Well this is basically the same way that the Doppler effect works. Waves are released, but because the police car is moving, the police car catches up with the waves slightly. The waves in front of the police car become compressed and the waves behind the police car become spread out. More spread out waves have a larger wavelength, larger peak to peak distance, and therefore have a smaller frequency, a lower frequency, which means a lower pitch. So when the police car is moving away from you, the waves you receive are spread out and therefore have a lower pitch, they sound lower. And when a police car is coming towards you, the waves are pushed together, making it a higher frequency, so you hear a higher note. That's the Doppler effect. So that's the Doppler effect, but we also have this equation to calculate the size of the shift in frequency. Here we have F prime, or F with a little apostrophe after it, and that's the frequency that you actually hear. F zero is the frequency that's been produced by the source of the sound, the actual frequency of the sound. V sound is the speed of sound, which is usually about 340 meters per second. V observer is the speed that the observer is moving, or the listener in other words. And V source is the speed that the source of the sound is moving with. So if it's a police car and it's siren, the police car moving would be the source of the sound moving. So this equation could really just be a plug and chuck. What makes it a little bit more complicated is that you have to understand the sign convention. When you plug in your values of the velocities of the source and the observer, you have to get your signs correct. If the observer is actually moving towards the source, then plug that in as a positive number. If the observer is moving away, then plug that in as a negative number. And if the source is actively moving towards the observer, plug in the velocity of the source as a positive number, and if it's moving away from the observer, plug it in as a negative number. Or in other words, towards is positive, away from is negative. But what's that got to do with a sonic boom? A sonic boom doesn't sound like anything pitchy at all. It sounds like, well, it sounds like a boom. So to understand the sonic boom, we have to think about what would happen with a plane traveling at the speed of sound. What happens is that the sound can't go anywhere in front of the plane. It can't go beyond the, p the position of the plane because the plane itself is going at the speed of sound. The sound can't go any faster. Your plane is going as fast as the sound is producing. So the sounds start to build up at the front of the plane. 
That build-up forms a cone shape, and when an observer, a listener, passes through that cone, they hear all of that sound at once, and it makes a huge boom. But isn't light a wave? So shouldn't the same thing happen with flashlights? Or maybe the lights on top of a police car? Well, light is a wave, but it's also very, very fast. The speed of light is much faster than the speed of sound. The speed of light is 300 million meters per second. That means light travels 300,000 kilometers every second. Now that, that is fast. So in order to see the double effect for light, you'd have to have an object that was moving comparatively fast to that, maybe half the speed of light, or a quarter of the speed of light, or four-fifths the speed of light. And certainly it would have to be much faster than a police car. But hold on a second, we do have speeds that fast in our universe. In fact, when we look at the night sky, look at the light from the universe as a whole, we see something quite startling. All of the light in the universe, all of it, is Doppler shifted. All of it is red shifted. It all looks more red than it should. It is all lower frequency than we would expect it to be. It's redder than it's supposed to be. Why is that? Well, the most sensible explanation is that it's like the police car. Everything is just moving away from us. But that's crazy, right? In fact, if you look at the amount of redshift, it actually suggests that everything in the universe is moving away from us at an incredible speed. And so we conclude that the universe is expanding. Not only expanding, but it turns out that expansion is speeding up. And those observations, those origins, are the start of what became Big Bang Theory. If everything is expanding, then roll the tape in reverse, and everything meets. Although it turns out there actually isn't a center of the universe. But that's a topic for another day. What will the universe be like in millions or billions or, let's say, trillions of years' time? If what appears to be so is so, well, it will be a dark, depressing place, and we'll be a long way from anything exciting. So, next time one of your friends invites you to a party, ask you to bask in the bright lights and loud music. Next time you have just too much to do or just you don't feel like going out the door, maybe you should do it. Maybe you should feel lucky to have the chance because all of that light, all of that sound, all of that energy will not be around forever. So I guess what I'm saying is YOLO or maybe that should be yo eo Thanks for watching Flip Physics. If you like this video, you can press the like button. You can also subscribe or go to the flipphysics.net website. And most of all, don't forget to leave a comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. Until next time, keep questioning.